Hey everyone, just want to share with you guys a pretty challenging app that I repaired. Uh, it's something I bought months back off of eBay, none working, and it was much worse than the seller described. But, uh, you know, I thought, well, you know, it's something, you know, I'll be able to handle it anyway. But, uh, turns out it was uh, quite a challenge. Uh, initially, you know, it looked just like a cap job. You know, the symptoms were like no sound and hardly any channel one channel might have had a little bit of sound but uh i didn't notice the dc all over the place until i got to checking because it you know the caps were obviously bad i mean these surface mount caps on class a designs tend to go bad it's the first thing that goes bad so i went ahead and replaced them that's something i would have had to have done anyway regardless of the repair but uh you know, still had the same symptoms after doing all that, but uh, but at least I had good caps now. And I got to checking, and uh, you know, like I say, there was DC all over the place, and uh, there was a, there's a little bunch of tiny little transistors on this thing, and a bunch of them, about every channel, had bad little, in the daughter board and under the daughter boards, there was these little tiny transistors that were bad. Diodes too, some diodes were bad as well. And the associated resistors that usually, when something shorts out, it usually takes out resistors in the same area as well. So I uh, replaced all of them and uh, lo and behold, it shorted right back out. So um, I knew something was causing all the channels to to blow the transistors right back out after I'd replaced them. So and I, since everything goes to that back board, I assume that it was that board, maybe a partial short somewhere on the board, but no schematics to this thing. You're, you're talking multi-level boards here. Uh, you know, I couldn't get in touch with Krell. I probably would just order the back board, but I think they were going through struct restructuring or something. They te temporarily closed down, I think, but uh, I couldn't get in touch with them. So. I just put this on the back burner for a while, you know, I just, uh, you know, I had, oh yeah, and I'd found out the bottom of the board had, on this was damaged. I couldn't tell till I pulled this board out. I mean, you hardly ever have to deal with, this is just a circuit board. Very rarely is something like that the problem. But in this case, it was the major problem. You know, that was what was causing this to blow out, but, uh, so I pretty much just kind of given up for a while because I had no schematics, no way to get in touch with Krell. So, and uh, all I can say is God works in mysterious ways because I bought this showcase to fix up and uh, lo and behold, uh, the circuitry was pretty much identical to this. And this was like uh, seven or eight years earlier than this. This was made for like the home theater standard back in 2001, and this was like, I think a 2008 or 2009 model. This very rare manufacturers go with exactly the same design. I guess if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? But uh, pretty much the same amp. And I mean, you can literally take a daughter board off this and swap it to this. There's one little tiny capacitor that's different, little film cap that's smaller value on this it gives it a little different sound i think too it's a, this is a little better sounding than the eight than this but they're both excellent sounding uh amplifiers but uh and this puts out more power it's got a slightly larger transformer but everything else as far as i can tell is pretty much identical so there may be some little small thing resistor or something somewhere i'm overlooking but pretty much it's all identical so i was able to use uh yeah, pretty much all electronics is based on resistance in its simplest form. So I was able to basically just take resistance measurements and uh, I was able to, uh, you know, compare the sides and uh, I was able to bypass the short. The short was on channel four. I was able to bypass that. And so now I'm using this on channel six and seven. It's still got a short within inside the circuit board. So that channel four can't be used, but uh I was able to, you know, bypass it, and then after doing all that, then uh, it's it's not shorting out anymore when you replace the transistors. So, you know, that pretty much took care of that. But I was still having a problem with what was originally channel four, which uh, I'm not sure if it caught on fire or what, but it had a ca catastrophic failure in that channel. So I had a lot of problems with that channel, you know, even after I'd taken care of that. Uh, 
I mean, you had bad film, film capacitors, uh, big transistors. You had a, a lot of bad components on that board. And, uh, and I did find out something there, something that I actually knew, but I just wasn't thinking about because I run into a similar problem with uh, an S1200 because they use this same transistors. Now, this uses big transistors, as you can see on the bottom here, for the heavy lifting, but uh, these these driver boards are, that are running Class A are using these little tiny transistors. And the challenge with them is basically telling what they are. You have to get in a magnifier and kind of turn it to the side just to, to see what the little markings is on these things. But uh, that's just one of the challenges. But uh, when replacing these, what you have to do, uh, if you have a, you can't just replace just the bad ones. And that's what I did to begin with. Because when you replace the bad ones, you know, you put new transistors in there. And then there's others that weren't really showing bad, but they're kind of weak. You know what I'm saying? Due to age and, and from probably and partially damaged, but they don't really show it up on the meter that they're bad. So you end up, uh, and so they ended up going right back out after I replaced them. So what you have to do in this case is uh, when you're replacing transistors, it's actually transistors and dual diodes. You have to replace them all in that, in whatever area you're working on. The, the area that caused me the most problem was the, uh, uh, area up under actually this is the fourth channel right here but it was the area up under the daughter board it had some transistors you know that were causing some problems but uh yeah just had to replace and um so after i did that you know replaced them all in that area you know pretty much uh that fixed it but uh i never could have fixed it if not for this showcase so that was just you know a gift from god buying this showcase even though it had its own problems you know but still i never would have been able to you know probably find the short in this board without you know having this one so uh, so that pretty much took care of it and uh well, i just wanted to share this with you guys